Hello, if you've just joined us, you're watching Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris. With me, Sharad Kutten. The one-day Day One Rakyat sitting this Monday, 18th of May, will only have a single agenda, that being the Yang Di Pertuan Agung's opening address. This means several items that had been scheduled will not be presented to the House, including the appointment of the opposition leader, the appointment of the Public Accounts Committee lead and the first reading of two supplementary supply bills. Joining us on the line now to discuss these missed opportunities, we have... Dato Liu Vui Kiong, Member of Parliament for Batu Sapi and former Law Minister. Uh, good evening, YB. Thank you for coming on the show tonight. Now, I understand you had put forth a motion to request the um, to request to extend the one-day sitting to eight days, which was accepted by the Speaker. But it now looks like the House will not have a chance to debate it. Uh, why? What did you hope to achieve in those eight days? Actually, in fact, as you can see. The letter that was dated 17 April from the Secretary of the Parliament is uh, limiting us from debating on the various issues. And this is very much unconstitutional. And that because uh, we have so many issues that we need to ask the Prime Minister and his Minister, Cabinet Minister. But by not allowing us, as per the letter yesterday, 13th of May, only limiting to... Uh, uh, the King's speech. At first, on the 17th April, when they sent us a letter, they said that we are going to have a King's speech plus uh, the perbatan on the law and the bill, plus the portion on the government bills. But then now they are saying that no uh, perbatan, no motion, but just the King's speech. So this is very much against the spirit of the Constitution. It is also, I believe, uh, uh, trying to avoid the accountability of parliament and the responsibility of cabinet to parliament. They are avoiding uh, parliament by not uh, giving the minister the opportunity to address and to answer questions from from the MPs. We oh, are the what, yes of the people. YB, I, I do want to ask you though, it seems that a couple of weeks ago, the prime minister himself said that he would, uh, you know, open up his government and the, you know, the, that response to the COVID crisis to the Dewan Raya and to scrutiny. Yeah. What do you think has changed his mind? I don't really know. I think, uh, I think it's the fear within himself because he knows that there is a motion from Langkawi to challenge his, uh, you know, legality and his uh, majority in the house. And I think he is fearful of that. And he has this, uh, 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 you know, inferiority complex within himself, maybe, that he thinks that he will not get the majority on Monday. And thereby, the, he instructed the speaker uh, to limit the sitting on Monday just to uh, the king's speech. I think this is very, very much against the Constitution. Okay, and all right. So, so you say, YB, that, that limiting this is avoiding the accountability of Parliament. You said that you, you, know, you and your colleagues have things that you would like to ask. What exactly would you like to ask? Oh, there are so many questions. I think the utmost uh, issue in the minds of all Malaysians is with regard to the COVID-19. Right? Everyone wants to know that the stimulus packages that have been announced by the Prime Minister, perhaps the... Uh, B40 to help the industry, to help the entrepreneurs, to help the people in Malaysia. The 260 billion uh, packages that they have announced. So how are they going to utilize the money? They have not gone to Parliament to ask for approval from Parliament. They have not gone through the uh, supplementary bills. Are they going to use the money illegally? That is the question that I want to ask them. Mm. Right? And yeah. they are now, uh, you know, prohibiting us from doing that. I think this is very, very unfair to the people. And we have to understand that the minister, there are so many ministers that have been uh, newly appointed, especially the minister of health. We want to ask him how many countries has he actually contacted uh, during this uh, MCO time because he has gone on record to say that he has contacted 500 countries. So we want him to name the 500 countries that he has contacted. And he has also said so many things. And his other minister has also said some money, other issues with regards to 
the uh, Doraemon matters uh, with regard to uh, the interest rate. The Minister of Finance has made some contradictory statements with Bank Nagara. So we want to ask them, although also on the MCO, I uh, think that they have announced because uh, they have been uh, U-turned here and after that they are saying different things at different times. So and essentially, YB, you're asking for more accountability over the conduct of uh, this government of the last uh, couple of months and the crisis. Uh, I do want to ask you, you said it, it, it goes against the spirit of the Constitution, but does it go against the letter of the Constitution? Is there a legal case to be made uh, for the actions of the executive yes, in yes, not I mean, allowing the legislature to uh, uh, fulfill its function? Okay, we have to look at the Constitution. The Constitution says that Parliament must sit within six months from the last sitting, okay? The last sitting was in December. And then the first sitting for 2020 was supposed to be on the 9th of March. But because of the change of power on the 1st of March, the new government did not have the time to, to, to have the sitting on the 9th of March. That was scheduled in February. And it's fine, okay? Then they postponed it to May the 18th. Now the question comes. They are having this sitting on Monday, which is a one-day sitting with the King's speech. So a lot of questions have been put forward as to whether the opening of parliament by the King, just by giving a speech, constitutes a sitting. Because parliament, these sittings uh, have status. You see, first you must have a King's speech. So after that, you must have a debate. After that, you must also have a conclusion where all the MP will very around to accept the king's speech. Okay, that will probably take uh, a couple of weeks uh, for MPs to debate. Previously, it takes probably about three to four weeks, right? Mm -hmm. And then after that, in between, we have question time, we have uh, minister question time, we have many other motions uh, to be tabled by MPs. And then uh, we'll be asking questions to the minister, and the question asked, uh, questions from the rakyat as well, because the rakyat... Uh, okay, but why so you're saying that, you know, th this particular sitting might not uh, be sufficient to constitute an actual city. Are we headed exactly. towards a constitutional so, crisis as a consequence? It is, it is. If you look at what happened in uh, England when uh, Boris Johnson tried to prorogue Parliament, right, uh, then the court said that, you know, it was unconsciously done and it is unreasonably done uh, by the Prime Minister and the court subsequently ruled that it was not constitutional for Boris Johnson to do that. So in this case, we have to ask the Prime Minister this very important question, you see. Can the House sit on Monday and then the second part, the second part, the perbahasan, right? The debate on the King's speech to be done in July. Right. Okay, so, so now I want to ask so you... I think the question you... cannot... The answer is no, because you must understand that the, the, May sitting, the May sitting is the March sitting that has been postponed from March. That is the okay. first, first uh, term. The uh, second I term see. is in July. Okay. And then the third term is in October. Right. I, I do want to ask you, you, since you mentioned the July sitting, now all the things that you said that you wanted to ask, everything from budgetary oversight to uh, the MCO and the exit strategy, can all of that wait for the July sitting? Uh, no. It must be dealt with now because uh, we are now challenging the constitutionality of the whole thing, the entire thing. But before we can even move, I think the most important motion that has to be dealt with is the motion from Langkawi, Tun motion. Because Tun has said that the current Prime Minister does not have the majority. So he has to go to the House and prove to the House that, yes, I have the majority because he, before he can move on anything, you see, before he can say that, OK, I want to move this bill, I want to uh, table this motion. The business of the House and the business of the government cannot move until the current Prime Minister proves to the House that, yes, I have 112 MPs supporting me, 112 or more. But at this moment, he is avoiding that. Why is he avoiding that? That is the question that many of us want to ask him. Right. Okay. And also, initially on the 17th April, right, yep. the SUDR wrote to all the MPs that we are going to have RUU plus motion of the government. 
Well, but now, YB, unfo the... unfortunately, we need to take a quick break. So I want to thank you so much for speaking with us and some shedding your uh, some light into this matter. We appreciate your time. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. After this, we'll speak to lawyer and human rights advocate Dr. Ambiga Srivanasan. Stay tuned to consider this. Thank you.